In this demonstration, we will show you how Paxata's adaptive information platform will transform raw data into information to support a timely and accurate AML investigation. To enable this objective, we must address some common and critical data challenges involving high volumes, such as our transaction file from the data lake, combining multiple sources, such as the database which contains the high-risk accounts table and the Federal Reserve mapping which comes in an XML format from an external source. As if that weren't enough, we must also filter out the noise in the data and address data quality issues such as dirty, missing, and unexpected values and outliers, duplicates, and inconsistencies. These challenges result in a status quo which is slow, manual, and unrepeatable, not to mention without data governance or lineage. So how does Paxata empower an analyst to tackle these challenges on their own? Momentarily, we will walk through the analyst's accelerated process, which involves data quality checks that consist of profiling exercises and sanity checks to confirm we have a complete set of transactions, expected values for key attributes, and no duplicates. Then we must filter out the noise and focus on the signal, which in this case is a pattern of potential money laundering. Here we'll combine, aggregate, cleanse, and transform the data in three different sources without resorting to code or SQL scripts. Finally, we'll integrate with our existing BI solution and automate our data prep workflow, all within the Paxata point and click interface. Remember, the ultimate goal is to turn your raw data into information that is complete, clean, contextual, and consumable. With that in mind, let's watch Paxata in action. We'll begin by creating a new project named AML Review 2017 with the business goal of producing clean and reliable information to help identify potential money laundering activity in key districts. We'll begin by reviewing a full week of cash deposit transactions. Here in the data library, we have governed access to snapshots of raw source data that may be involved in any BI reporting or analytics exercise. Let's do a quick search for the transaction history file, the source of which is our data lake. As we bring this data into a new project, we see the columns have been automatically classified based on the content. Throughout this demonstration video, we will see how Paxata provides an Excel-like user interface which places the information at the forefront and enables point-and-click interactions for pattern highlighting, data profiling, and discovery. The data grid allows immediate access to every row in your data set. This is orders of magnitude beyond what is possible in Excel or sample-constrained environments. Now we have a few data quality checks to perform. For our first data quality check, we'll confirm we have been provided a full week of transactions. Paxata provides visual profiles of the complete attribute and gives me additional views since this is a date column. Looks like this file does not include any of the Sunday transactions. Next, we'll confirm the transaction set is comprised of expected values, such as the appropriate kinds of transactions. A quick check validates that both transaction methods are represented, so we're good to go there. For our final check, we'll look for any duplicates. Generating a filtergram on the transaction ID reveals we do in fact have three duplicate transactions here. We have actually identified a few needles in this data haystack. We'll take a closer look at these to see what kind of duplicates they are, and note that every value is duplicated for each of the three transactions here. As a result, we will capture a snapshot of this view by creating a publish lens to output an exception report. It's now time to filter out the noise in the data and focus on the signal. Using a filtergram, we'll home in on relevant transaction activity and context, cash deposits between $5,000 and $10,000, because we know that A, the typical suspects do not waste much time moving small deposits, and B, any amount beyond $10,000 will be subject to review by the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Next, we need to focus on the total cash deposit activity during the period. To do this, we'll aggregate the transaction set in real time to see the total deposit count and sum at the account level. Here I can select my desired aggregate type, the column to aggregate, and modify the suggested column name if needed. Then we'll filter on the aggregate count column to remove any account with daily deposit activity or less, since our likely suspects are structuring deposits multiple times per day. 
This will leave us with a relevant subset of accounts with suspicious deposit activity to review. To add some context to this subset of account numbers, we'll combine it with the High Risk Accounts listing. Searching the shared data library for datasets named High Risk, we find one here sourced from an Oracle database. Paxata scans the content of both datasets and suggests a join based on using account number and a column named Cust Account Num in the High Risk Accounts table. We learned that 20% of the accounts with suspicious activity show up in the High Risk listing. Furthermore, we have flexible options here for combining data without resorting to SQL or error-prone VLOOKUPs. Since our current focus is to investigate the high-risk accounts with suspicious activity, we'll select the join option that keeps only matched rows. And join columns from additional sources are identified by their own header color. Now that we have the context we need, let's confirm geographic information is accurate. This will allow reliable geomapping of the potential laundering hotspots at the BI layer. As such, we'll sanity check the key location attributes of country, state or province, and city. Being familiar with our business, I know that an 80-20 ratio of US to Canadian accounts is about right, so we'll move on to the state or province data. Paxata reveals that there are 68 different states or provinces here, so something is definitely off. Let's see if a quick column transformation will fix it. The preview provides a quick way to validate our thinking. 53 now makes sense, as I know we don't have high-risk accounts in all these locations. Now on to the city attribute, which is most critical. We see New York show up a couple times. Let's explore this a bit further. Hmm, problems bigger than expected. We'll need a smarter approach this time. In a matter of seconds, every value is scanned using intelligent algorithms for detecting misspellings, transposition errors, inconsistencies, punctuation, ordering, and other issues. Similar values are then organized into clusters, and our task is now reduced to a point-and-click exercise to quickly clean and normalize this data. As you've seen, Paxata uses algorithms to do the heavy lifting, but when needed, defers to the data preparer to combine and cleanse the information. False positives can also be dealt with, and our selections are captured and remembered as part of this repeatable step. After just a few minutes, we see a significant improvement in data accuracy. Our last task with the accounts information will be to check for invalid account creation dates. And what do you know, we have some accounts that were opened in the future? Alas, we have a manual entry problem due to a transposition error. Let's fix it now using find and replace. Much better. Lastly, we will merge in the external Federal Reserve mapping in order to analyze the possible laundering activity against the backdrop of the key reserve districts they take place in. In this case, it's a semi-structured XML file on my local machine, but Paxata provides an extensible connector framework which enables permission-based access to cloud, data lake, and enterprise sources. The added bonus to this import framework is that it automatically detects the file type and flattens it out to a tabular structure. Here we can override the parsing options like the record path, but this table format is exactly how I want to bring it into my project, so I'll leave it as is and add a quick description before I finish. Selecting this dataset will again trigger the join detection, and this time we see multiple relevant options. Since I'll be reviewing this data in the context of the US Reserve Districts, I'm going to look only at matched rows, which represents the 80% of high-risk accounts open in the US. For today's analysis, we want to output clean and relevant information for the West region. To facilitate easier filtering, we can split the FRB district column, which is a bit overloaded showing the two data elements, the district name and the district number. Our analysis jurisdiction is the West, so we'll filter on districts 10 through 12 and save a lens here to capture our final output and answer set. Earlier in the project, we discovered that a whole day of transactions was missing, so let's bring those transactions in now that the data has been loaded into the library. We'll take advantage of the fact that the step editor makes it really easy to mute, modify, reorder, and manage every step in real time using point and click and drag and drop interactions. So let's inject an append step here near the beginning. After a quick search for history, I find the dataset, but we'll preview it to make sure. 
Looks good, so I'll select it. Similar to a join, Paxata has built-in intelligence to help you append or union two datasets by automatically matching the columns. I see none unmatched, so I'm going to come over here and adjust the order by picking up this lens and dropping it here after my append to make sure it applies to the full set of transactions, which is now over 100 million rows. Our downstream steps are automatically refreshed, so we'll hit publish on this final lens to export it for a timely analysis in our BI solution. We'll click export and select Tableau server for this scenario. We'll log in and create a live connection. A few clicks later, and our answer set is ready for a geographic visualization of potential money laundering hotspots in our key areas of interest. Now you might have data consumers and stakeholders asking about these insights, wondering how these amounts were derived, or perhaps even distrusting the results. Well, you can rest easy because Paxata allows you to link back to the data lineage using an integration capability called Click to Prep. One click brings us right back to our data prep workflow and even dynamically passes through the El Paso filter from my dashboard selection, keeping us in context. Here, I can immediately address any questions about the underlying data and business logic by giving visibility into how the source data was prepared. I can activate column lineage to trace back to any steps which impacted the values of derived columns or key attributes, such as city, again within the context of our full set of steps. The versions panel enables full versioning, unlimited undo, and annotation support, so you can attach additional business context and meaning to your data prep workflow. Last but not least, Paxata can automate the end-to-end -end workflow by allowing you to schedule automation jobs right within the user interface.